I'm uh, Ben Stanger, um, here with Micah Sander and uh, Jason Mills, uh, the co-organizers of the Cellular Plasticity Meeting. And I um, suppose the goal of this um, video is to uh, address the questions of what the state of the field is of cellular plasticity, um, what we learned during this meeting, and where things are going. Uh, I think um, both the state of the field and the question of what we learned at this meeting are, are combined in one major conclusion, which is that there actually is a field of cellular plasticity. Uh, when, we, when we got together to organize the meeting, uh, initially we all knew that we were interested in this topic of uh, the ability of cells in adult tissues to change their phenotype, to change their identity, um, but we didn't know really how, how broadly that interest extended across different organs and organisms. And I think what we saw at this meeting uh, was a vast diversity of um, plasticity examples, uh, again, across uh, different model systems, um, different mechanisms, and really a great deal of enthusiasm uh, for the general question. So, um, so I think the state of the field is that the field is, is, is uh, alive and now um, uh, hopefully has a, a home for, um, for meeting in the future. So um, moving forward, I think something else that emerged also during the meeting is that, you know, science is, is very fluid. It moves very quickly. So also fields and communities um, are fluid and that um, we found that it was really timely to put together a group of scientists and bring them together to really take out this aspect of plasticity that has before also been discussed in meetings on stem cell biology or developmental biology. So we really uh, saw enthusiasm among um, the participants for moving this forward as a concept. And um, we received really also um, positive feedback from the audience to even broaden this beyond um, organ systems that were represented at this meeting. And one suggestion that was made um, to also bring in um, investigators from the field of hematopoiesis because um, there's been a lot of um, work in this arena and maybe the scientists um, there haven't sufficiently interfaced with um, scientists who study um, organs and, and, and other tissues. So we um, took these ideas and um, we'll actually um, pass them on to the next organizers and um, feel also another aspect that um, we thought uh, that we also received feedback on that could be moving, uh, could be brought out further moving forward is um, are there actually common mechanisms um, that govern plasticity um, across different organs and tissues? And then um, also could we then maybe identify these pathways and then learn how we could possibly manipulate them to actively change cell states so that you could harness these, this for um, actively driving regeneration or preventing cancer. So that was a very exciting concept that came out from this meeting that um, maybe in a few years there will be more knowledge and then um, that could be discussed really in also meetings moving forward. And uh, one of the um, interesting challenges in the field that we learned, we knew was a challenge, but uh, we got tremendous feedback on was nomenclature. So the meeting featured a session on uh, nomenclature and all the common terms that, uh, that people used. And as, as we learned, we are a field. Uh, and once you're a field, then you have to agree on names. And uh, I think the main thing that uh, we found and everybody found uh, from uh, the session was that uh, we have no agreement on names right now. So this is a challenge going forward, uh, and, uh, um, but an exciting challenge. Um, and I think we did a really good job. Uh, we, not uh, we, the entire audience and, and uh, everybody that, that participated in the panel, which was a, uh, um, in the discussion, uh, led by led by the panel um, was that uh, we we learned I think the scope of the issue uh, we learned the scope of the use of terms uh, and we learned a lot um, also about 
how the science and technology has, as it evolves, how it'll affect uh, uh, nomenclature going forward. Because right now, uh, in many ways, we have terms we learned uh, that uh, originated either in uh, as, as, as far back as 120, 130, 140 years from pathologists who knew nothing about the molecular side of the field uh, and from developmental biologists as they were first discovering the field. Um, and now we have to sort of integrate that uh, with all of our molecular uh, and technologies as they're arising. So that's going to be a challenge uh, and one that uh, I think the three of us are very interested in. Um, in the coming upcoming months uh, in addressing and trying to get further input from people in the field uh, so that we at least have some um, placeholder, some, um, some definition of the scope of the issue. So uh, that was a really big challenge that we had. Um, and then in our last session, we got some ideas. Uh, many of them we covered uh, already in, in this from the, from the audience, but the audience feedback was incredibly positive and um, uh, I think everybody agreed that we're a field. Um, and we had uh, a number of specific suggestions uh, uh, going forward, but we kind of hit them all, which the main thing was that people really, really liked uh, the cross-disciplinary aspect of it. And if, if anything, they would, they would want even more of that. So even more across tissues. And as Micah said, uh, with hematopoietic uh, um, stem cells, it also came up, the hematopoietic um, system, uh, but it also came up um, that uh, uh, there'd be good integration with more model, more model systems, more sort of classic regeneration. So, yep. so the the tenor was really exciting. I think going forward, it, it might be worth um, articulating a little bit what what really does distinguish this. And and even though um, we're having nomenclature discussions, uh, uh, what specifically is meant by dedifferentiation, transdifferentiation? Um, even cell plasticity, plasticity. It's, itself. Um, uh, what we're really talking about is uh, the ability of adult cells to, in some way, change their program, uh, transcriptional program, phenotypic and functional program. And so that, in that sense, this, what we're really uh, uh, trying to, to say is its own defined field, is distinct from the stem cell field. Um, we're you know, much more concerned with what's happening in injury states or infectious states where the tissue is invoking this plasticity as a way of dealing with the stresses um, that it encounters in the natural world. Um, so that's, in that, in that way, this meeting and this topic is much more closely related to regeneration than it is to development, although, of course, uh, the, 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 the pathways and mechanisms used during development are often recapitulated in, in adulthood. The other, I think, major area where um, this theme of plasticity touches on is, is cancer. And we heard a number of talks at the meeting of how changes in cell identity or phenotype uh, are precursors to cancer through metaplasia in multiple different organs and what the mechanisms are of that and how that could be used for detection or prevention. And then once cancers actually are fully developed, Plasticity is also a mechanism for invasion. Uh, changes in cell phenotype allow cells to escape um, uh, chemotherapy. So, um, so again, there's a, there's, a, there's a connection between cell plasticity and the cancer biology field, but again, uh, we feel that it's quite, quite distinct, and indeed the mechanisms involved in, in regenerative um, uh, types of plasticity are likely also used in, in cancer. Yeah, and I think that's a, a theme that, that came up a lot and that, the, uh, that we're closer than uh, the developmental or developmental signaling field itself to the actual application to be able to harness for regeneration or to, to block either cancer uh, initiation mostly, that's the, the mm -hmm. area that we're in, but then some of those mechanisms are also used in tumors themselves to, to propagate. So we're a little bit closer to that translational edge and I think people like that. One other aspect to also reiterate on what Ben said that came up in the meeting is that, that the term stem cell itself is actually something that we might want to redefine in the future because what really the science showcased um, um, at this meeting is how plastic the cells are so that there's many tissue cells that um, given certain conditions like injury um, actually adopt properties that um, really make them and turn them into a stem cell. So. Um, 
we felt that uh, maybe the actual umbrella term of plasticity might in the future really capture all of this so that we go away from these rigid definitions on what is a stem cell, what is a dedifferentiating cell, what is a transdifferentiating cell, because the science really points in a different direction in that there aren't these specialized cells that you know, are programmed to do this or that, that it's all really contingent upon the environment that the cell exists in. So um, really a better understanding of cell-cell communication is really the next step, step forward to really understand you know, what, what um, makes a stem cell a stem cell. So I felt that was something that really came out in this meeting. They came out at the keynote, really. The very first address uh, in the question and answer uh, session, uh, the concept of stem cell was redefined right. as a more stochastic um, environment and uh, uh, spatiotemporal instantaneous uh, functional definition rather than an ontogenic one where the cell uh, is of a certain stable state. Uh, so even, even the stem cell concept, I think, um, um, we stretch and may incorporate into, right. into the, our global concept of plasticity. Right. I mean, I think that, that the, the concept of the stem cell evolved as a, almost an anthropomorphic um, you know, attempt to understand tissues in a very hierarchical way. And what we're really uh, seeing and saying with this notion of plasticity is, is those hierarchies, nature doesn't really care about those hierarchies. Nature cares about um, maintaining function and re-equilibrating when uh, that function is disrupted. And so all parties in a tissue, uh, not all necessarily, but many parties in a tissue can, can come in, change what their, what their jobs are. Um, to deal with that. that I just that smile concept. because the anthropomorphic, the, the pathologist of 120 years ago often used the term mother cell. So that's mm -hmm. about as, for the concept of stem cell, that's mm -hmm. about as anthropomorphized as you can get. So, By and large, um, really, um, this was uh, a really exciting meeting because it really brought together um, scientists that haven't convened in that um, manner before. And we sensed a lot of enthusiasm and we are really excited about taking this forward and really um, seeing this field of plasticity emerge and then, as said, even like broadening next time um, the, um, the, the scope of the uh, meeting and that to include more model organisms and then also uh, really have a broader presentation of um, different tissues and begin to understand commonality in the um, pathways that drive these processes. Yeah, I mean, people, people throughout the meeting came up to me saying how much they were enjoying it and that even though a lot of the talks were outside of their field and um, uh, things that they had never thought about, that they found value um, in that cross-disciplinary uh, opportunity to see uh, how other people were addressing s similar problems in their system. Um, issues, of course, of, uh, of epigenetic remodeling and, and chromatin biology are inherent in, in these changes in cell identity. And so again, seeing how other people in, uh, in the fly or in a, in a mammalian uh, system or, or what have you are addressing those problems seem to be really valuable. And so I, I, I agree that um, um, should there be a next iteration, which I sincerely hope there is, that there be uh, an even greater mechanism on the uh, uh, emphasis on the breadth um, of systems. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Even uh, we, we felt we were, like we felt as though we were taking a risk as it was with the breadth because we all thought we were studying the same thing. But the big uh, risk you're taking as organizers is that you bring in people from all these different disciplines and they get here and they say. Why am I here? You know, I mean, I'm not the same as all those <laughs> others. And I think uniformly, uh, we didn't have that happen. I think uniformly, everybody said this was fantastic, uh, and it was great to be able to uh, to see everybody else in all these other fields and realize that we have a lot of the same issues and that uh, we can work together. But it was not. This is the first meeting of its kind. It was not completely evident that uh, I think I'm sure all of us at some point had a four in the morning wake up where we were thinking, you know, what if nobody, <laughs> nobody gets it, you know? But uh, so I'm super relieved and happy that, uh, that everybody seems to have got it and uh, that, no, no, the, that energy going forward. The enrichment and cohesion really came across throughout the meeting. And we really didn't know as organizers, so we were 
Um, you know, first we thought we want to really manage this meeting, and then the meeting sort of just managed itself. It managed itself, <laughs> India. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I had still a vision that I was going yeah. to have to, like, at a party where you brought together diverse people, yes. you know, say, "Oh, maybe you should talk to and do this." But uh, no, people just uh, it just it really like a, happened. It, yeah. they, it, they, the grassroots uh, self organization yeah. was amazing and yeah. and made it so much easier on on yes. us at least for. Uh, yeah. um, um, thinking about how things going forward and uh, and how the meeting flowed. So I think I think we're 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 really grateful to all the participants because they're the ones who really made this happen. Exactly, that's yeah. the bottom line. <laughs> thank you, thank everybody uh, thank who, came who came and uh, who who did all that so that we just could sit back and be one of, be the same, you know, be yeah. attendees like everybody else. I think we're all just grateful that we pushed it off and we just really think that it will carry itself forward.